never be more appropriate for anything that I upload to this channel than this. Welcome, one and all, to Matanui. Welcome to my childhood. I'm not going to spend too much time gushing over this. Yes, this is going to be a live commentary sort of let's play. I don't do these kinds of videos often. I know some of you guys don't even like these kinds of videos, but this isn't going to be anything too painful. It's not going to be a slow slog. It's just going to be kind of slow of an introduction. But, yeah, I've, I've played this game before. I know where I'm going. I know what I'm doing. I know where to... Yeah. Anyway, this begins just moments after another game I LP'd a while ago. At the end of that game, you have a nasty fall, you wake up with a bump on your head, and you don't remember anything. Yeah, I haven't seen that before. Anyway, I'm gonna go straight over here first, because this will be a good introduction, not necessarily just to the game, but to the story, just to Bionicle as a whole. Because I don't just want people who are already familiar with Bionicle and have already played this game a thousand times to, to see this. I want to introduce people to what Bionicle was. I want people to see it the way I saw it, if that's possible. But I'll let this cutscene speak for itself. These people use rocks to tell their stories because they don't have TV. Anyway... I'll show you what that is a little later. And uh, I'll talk to that little blue person down there a little later and so on. But I'm gonna do things in a certain order and try to present them in a certain way just to make it as easy to understand and just as enjoyable as possible. I think you should have gotten the basic gist of how the story goes from what we saw up there, but in case you didn't, in case you have no idea what the heck is going on, I'm gonna find someone who can explain it for us. But first, I just want to show off a really good testament to the art of game design. So the first thing you see is this canister. It's gleaming. Alright, that draws you to it. Now of course the you know this is in the center of the screen and it's gonna take most of your attention, but you'll also notice this cliff in the background. You'll even notice something gleaming on top of it every now and then. So this immediately makes you think, wait, I can go over there too? And it just gives you this great sense of scale, just how massive this place must be, and it makes you want to explore all of it. And then you notice these tracks. So you're like, oh wow, I wonder what came out of here. It must be really interesting. I want to go look at And then you notice that you can turn around if you go far enough. And, oh, there you go. Now you see a statue, and you, you get a sense of culture. You're like, wow, somebody built this weird thing, and they put it here. I wonder who did it. I'm going to go find out. And then you also see the mountain in the background, and again, you get a great sense of scale. Just how massive this place must be. But anyway, the footprints are really enticing, so you, you, know, you follow them for a while. You get a better sense of whatever must have left in there might look like. And then this is where the game ends. At least in the first build. You see, this game was released in chunks when it was first... Yeah, they didn't release it all in one pack right off the get-go. You can get it that way now. But when this was first released way back in 2001, they just did a little chunk of it every now and then. And the first chunk, all you got was just this beach. You could go to that cliff over there. She wasn't even there until a later build. You could, you know, you could see that vision we saw up there. You could go to the end of the beach, and that was it. That was all you got. It couldn't even be called a tutorial level. It was just a, a tiny smidge of the island. Just like a hundredth of what it would eventually end up being in that first bundle. But even that was enough. Even that was all that was needed to just make you so intrigued, just so fascinated about what you saw. Because this place is beautiful and it's just so mysterious. You're like, I want to see what else there is. And you got to in time. 
But anyway, once you reach this area, which is the end of this current demo, is this place, yeah, this looks pretty cool, kind of scary, but you know, let's go see it. I mean, someone else was obviously strong enough to make it through there, so why can't I? But anyway, at the end of the first demo, you just see the, the, the silhouette of a warrior in the mist, head steam, whatever, and you click on him, you get a closer look at him, he turns back to look at you, and he walks away like a badass. And that, that is the point where anyone who played this just got hooked. Like, I have to see who that guy is, I have to find out where he went. And then you do, in the second bundle that was released, where you get to go in there, into this city inside a frigging volcano, and over to these woods. Which you might not notice right away, but you know, it's just another place that's really intriguing. Anyway, I'm gonna look for a guy who can explain that vision I saw back there. This, the idea of this place is that it's really easy to get lost in these woods, but if you keep scrolling, you'll see it's really just the same screen repeated over and over and over again. And it's easy to get lost in here, supposedly. It's actually a lot easier to get out, because all you have to do is find a sign, and there you go. Just like that, we're already out. But I don't want to get out so soon, I want to find a guy. And depending on just how lucky you are, you can find him right away, or it could take like, just minutes of just clicking through these screens again and again and again until you happen to trip over this guy. Once I just kept clicking like this, and I ran right past him. I saw him too late, I'd already clicked again on the screen, and I just ran like whoop, and he was gone. If it takes me a long time to cut uh, to find him, then I'll, I'll do a jump cut. But I'm hoping I find him pretty quickly. Here he is. Now before we talk to him, I just want to share this one little animation that I, I didn't notice until just recently. I usually click on him right away, but I was lingering during a test recording, and there he goes! Yes, this guy farts, and they ignite right away. Probably because it's just a lot of... A lot of... Just stuff in the air. Anyway, let's talk to him. I am Kapura. Are you the Makuta? What is the Makuta? If you do not know what is the Makuta, then I guess you are not it. That is good. Jala says I have to be careful of the Makuta when I am in the forest. He says the Makuta is everywhere. He means Rahi. Monsters. Things you can see. But I know the Makuta is here now, in these burnt trees and in the dead soil. All of these things were destroyed by the Makuta, but the Makuta never left them. That is how he becomes strong. That is what the Makuta does. He destroys things. I think the forest looks very beautiful this way too. And when it burned, you could see all the fires perform their great Takata dance all the way to the sea, and it was very beautiful. Where am I? You are where you are. If I practice, I can be where I am not. I think I can feel it. It is hot here where I am, but where I am not, it is cold, and I think I can feel it. I must practice more. The island has many places to visit. I want to see all of them, but the others do not like to travel. Matanui is very big. Fakama says that in the beginning of time, Matanui fell from the sky and landed here. The Makuta came after him and made him fall asleep, and sent his monsters out of the world to destroy it, out across the world to destroy it. I destroy its beautiful things, and to make the Matora his slaves. I can't believe I screwed that up so badly. Fakama has told us to wait for more creatures to fall from the sky who will save us. I think one of them landed on the beach. I saw it fall when I was practicing before. Fakama knows more. You should ask him. He lives in Takaro. And just like that, we get a good grasp of the story. What are you doing? I am practicing. Fakama says that even though I am slow, I may be faster than all the others and travel very far. He says I must practice. Jelly says I'm being silly. I practice often. Uh, goodbye. Goodbye. Yeah, to this day, even the guys who wrote this guy, they have no idea what he's babbling on about. Even they don't understand the stuff about going fast by being slow and whatnot. Anyway, find my way back out of here. Finding my way back out of here shouldn't be a problem. I just have to find a sign that'll lead me right out. That's the whole idea of this place. You just keep clicking around, and then you find a sign, and there you go, you're out. So, in theory, it's really hard to get out, but it isn't really. It's, there we go. It's just a matter of luck. Interestingly, there was a PC game for the, of Bionicle that was never really released, but in it, you play as the Toa, these, these mysterious warriors we'll get into later on. And... One person managed to reconstruct like a like a sixth of the game, just a good chunk of it. And at some point, you meet Kapura, or like another version of him that's all white instead of red. And you have pretty much that exact same conversation with him. 
So even though that game was cancelled, I'm glad that some elements of it made it into other games for people to enjoy. You may have noticed that guy was really primitively animated. And yeah, some of these guys are. You may have noticed a lot of them look the same. It'll get better as we go on, because keep in mind, this game was released in a bunch of little chunks. And of course, early on in the game's development, some things were kind of rough. We've lost communications with Gakaro. I have no Matoi to spare for a reconnaissance unit. There are never good enough, enough good warriors to send against the Rahi. You look stout, Traveler. You should consider a career in the Guard. Who are you? I am Jala, Captain of the Guard. It's my job to protect the city against the Rahi. I knew they were getting stronger, but no one in the city believed me. Until the beasts overran the Trent Crime Readout. I lost a lot of good warriors that day. Then Tahu arrived, and now we know why the Rahi are on the move. Fakama says he'll save us, but I don't see the point putting all our faith in him. You can never have too much security. Yeah, tell that to anyone who doesn't like the TSA, the NSA, and all that shit. Anyway, yeah, this is what Chala should sound like to me. Anyway, what is a Rahi? The Rahi serve the Makuta. They are horrible beasts, ruthless and fierce. Some can fly, others walk along the ground. Some I've heard even tunnel beneath it. We've bowed many of them. In recent times, they've become bolder and have forced us back here. Takara used to reach all the way of the coast. The charred jungle used to be a green, peaceful place, but in the fury of our battles it was burnt. But we are Takaro Matoran, and we will not surrender. And now Tahu, the great fire spirit, has come to lead us against them. They can attack any time, though, although it is always at least when it's least expected. That is why we must always be on guard. I studied them extensively. It's possible that they were once normal creatures, like the others that inhabit Matanui until the Makuta turned them. Although I'm not certain of this, if it was true, there may be another way to fight them. Until then, we must patrol our stockades and our trenches day and night and keep the guard fires burning. What is Takaro? Takaro is a city in the Great Lake of Fire in the shadow of the Mangai, the Great Volcano. This fortress guards the bridge to it. Many Matoran live there. Surely you've heard of it. Well, yeah, I, I kind of live there. <laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't blame him for never noticing. Most of the people in Takaro farm the lava fields to the north beneath the Mangai. Many are surfers riding the lava rapids for surf and for sport. Our people- I'm sorry I'm messing this up. Our people are the most courageous warriors in all of Montanui, and we're not afraid to challenge the Makuta's beast if we must. But we cannot confront the enemy alone, and I do not have faith in the other cities of Montanui. If they will not join us in the defense, we will all perish, tow or not. Thank you, goodbye. May Tao protect you, traveler. Uh... In earlier builds of the game, this bridge would be down, and you'd have to click on this thing to make it go up. I'm gonna make it go down and up, I'm just gonna show this off anyway. Yeah, in this build of the game, some things basically take care of themselves for you. But in the original build of the game, you had to do things like this on your own. I've just... I've never been able to get over just how silly this bridge is, quote unquote. I mean, it's just a bunch of pillars that you have to precariously hop along and just hope that you don't slip off and fall into the lava. I don't care how hardy these guys are, I don't care if they could take the noxious fumes and all that stuff. If you fall into lava, you're dead. Just like that. And, uh... Just like hopping across stones in a river. Yay. Done. And yeah, though this is not the same guy we just met, neither is that. Some of these guys just look the same. Like I said, this is a very early part of the game. This was only the, like, second pack released. And this one, this had a bunch of packs. Um, and later on, you, they're better drawn and everything, but in these early chapters, everything's just kind of rough. Now, if Tao is here, I gotta keep this shrine spotless. Anyway. One thing I really do like is how this guy is drawn. Ah, uh, man, just so cool. So, you have found your way back after all. You are brave. I do not know what brought you to this city, but you should take care. There are some who remember you. The temper of Tarkarl Matoran boils as swiftly as the great Mangai in whose shadow we live. But in this, our first hour of hope, you may find the villagers' patience to be greater than usual. Yes, there is hope in Tarkarl. Tahu is here. It was Chala who found him. He caught him in a trap intended for Arahi. It was almost the end of my brave captain, and of his famous guard. Oh, Kapura. Finally 
get to get a better look at this guy. I love the body language and everything. That's all they need. No oh, Kapura. <laughs> Just that sound that same sound from my intro, now you see where it came from. Truly this is the stuff of legends. The people are elated, but I know that their courage will be tested now more than ever. Tahu's arrival marks a first step in a great struggle, and I have much to do. I am sorry for having so little time for you, as you know there is a lot to do. Is there anything more you would ask of me? Uh, how do you know me? This is hardly the time for jokes. Have you forgotten all of your great deeds, and also the thing that drove you away from us? Who are you? I am Vakama. I am the Turaga of this village. I am the legend keeper, the Takawa leader, he of the great fire staff who farms the Mangai's burning core. Have your aimless wanderings caused you to forget everything? Surely you still have the board that I gave you, for that was a special gift. Lava surfing is a difficult skill, and no Matoran other than those that dwell in Talcaro have knowledge of it. It would be a pity if you had forgotten it entirely. Who is Tahu? He will save us. He has come from the heavens, as foretold in the ancient legends of our city, to battle the Makuta with a sword of fire and release us from tyranny. He is a great hero and will struggle against the Rahi of the Makuta and will face great dangers. The legends prophesy six heroes descend from the heavens to Matanui, and of them, Tahu is the fiercest. But his passage to Matanui has left him uncertain. He has needed help to understand this long-awaited quest. I have told Tahu all I know of the legends of Matanui and of the Masks of Power. I have done all I can. Now it is up to him to adventure into the wilderness and to find a way to defeat the Makuta. This is just so cool. Thank you, goodbye. Forgive me, I have much work to do. I am preparing for the arrival of another. I am not certain, but the stars have revealed a new prophecy, which I do not yet fully understand. And now we're gonna talk to that blue person out there. But yeah, that's a pretty good introduction to things. So yeah, basically this great spirit came from the heavens, his evil brother followed, and these heroes followed. We've, we've gotten some glimpse of one of them, but uh, I'm going to show you one of them in action now. now. This is another great thing about game design. Even though this person is really small and really far away, you can make out their features and you might recognize, Hey, that's another person from a Happy Meal! That means they're important! Same thing with that uh, Jala guy we talked to. Help me! Help me! My village has been attacked! Who are you? My name is Maku of Gakaro. Gakaro lies between the sea and Lake Naho down the coast. It's a great village with many Matoran, and our leader is the Tarago no Kama. I fear much of it has been destroyed by now. Will you help me? Wait, wait, what happened? I was away when the Rahi attacked, and when I returned, the monsters were everywhere, destroying everything in sight. No Kama and the others barricaded themselves into a hut to hide, but the Rahi broke the pump and the hut sank beneath the waves. And suddenly we're in a completely different place. Must be a bug. Please, there's no time. My people are in great danger. Yes, I will help you. Hopefully this won't break the game. Go to Gakaro and find Okama. She is very wise and might have a plan for escape. I will try to find Gali. If the Rahi are near the village, she is the only one who can defeat them. She's on a great quest and may be very far away. The only way to get to Gakaro from here is by sea, so you must take my boat and I will search for the tow on foot. Good luck. And tell Nokama I am safe. Now, what we're heading toward now is the third pack released for this game, and this... This is that point where I just... This just blew my mind. I just couldn't believe what I was seeing when I was a kid. This was amazing to me. 
way back in 2001. There was just nothing else like this in the world. But before we go in there, I want to show you something else. This is just so cool. You see something like this, it can't help thinking, Wow! Whoever looks like this must be really important. It just cements itself in your mind. How could you forget something like that? Anyway, this is a pretty simple minigame. I mean, there are a lot of little puzzles like this throughout the game. Nothing too complex, nothing a kid couldn't solve. You just put a big one in, a couple of medium ones in, and then a few little ones just even things out. Simple. Anyway, this place is surprisingly creepy. This whole game has a great atmosphere. What's creepy about this place is just that there's, there's no music. There's no one around. You're, you're all by yourself. You don't know if someone's gonna jump out at you from the water. I mean, when you're a kid, like, anything like that could happen. I mean, it might not seem like something like that's gonna happen now, but... I was kind of freaked out when I was first in this place. It's just these weird gurgling noises. Everything's kind of falling apart. It's just spooky. This looks important. Hmm. Ooh. Who is that? Who's up there? Marco sent me to rescue you. Marco escaped? We were so worried about her. We are trapped here underwater. The door is stuck and we can't open it. If the village pumps are repaired, the hut will rise to the surface and we can escape. The rat, he smashed them and pieces fell under the water. If you can find the missing piece and put it back in the pump machine, it will float us back up. I left a light stone in my hut. It might help you see underwater. Please hurry. Okay, hold on. I'll be right back. Hurry back. I don't know how much longer we can survive in here and the Rahi may return. I feel I should explain something right now, because you guys are probably going to mistake, mistake it for some kind of bug, but no, it really isn't. Okay, so like I said, this game was released in PAX. And back in the day, when it was first on Bionicle.com, when there was a Bionicle.com, there was a save feature. At least, I, I think so. You could save, you, could, you, you, know, you didn't have to play it all in one trip, and you could just keep going. And it was really cool. But after it was taken down and then re-released a couple times, and well, now you can play it on Templar Studios' own website, the guys who made the game. I mean, it's really nice that LEGO let them keep that online. You don't even have to download it like I did. You can just play it there. Like, LEGO doesn't have anything to lose commercially from this game simply existing. But anyway, for convenience, they divide in the game, they divide it into like 10 chapters. You can just skip to any part of the game that you really, really like. Uh, the one thing I find kind of annoying is that you don't have to look for things and add them to your inventory anymore. You do if you play the whole game in one trip, but when you go to a certain chapter, where by then it's pretty much expected that you've already got something, you don't have to go through the trouble of finding it. And that's all fine and dandy, but even when you start from the beginning of this game, the thing that you should have found right here is already in your inventory. How stupid is that? It's kind of a dumb, weird bug glitch thing. I don't know, maybe that was completely intentional, but I think it's pretty dumb. Anyway, look, it's the same person that we saw out there above the waterfall. Sorry for taking the time to explain all that, but yeah. I mean, it is nice that you can skip to any part of the game that you want, any of your, your favorite scenes, but I just think that's kind of dumb. Because it does kind of break the immersion. But anyway, this right here. This is where I really fell in love with this game. I already really liked it, but after you see something like this, you're just mesmerized by it. And, I mean, it's already impressive by today's standards. If this game was made today, it would already be cool. But this was made way back in 2001. This game is 13 years old, and it still looks so freaking beautiful. Just the fish swimming around, and just these rays of light, and you can see the ocean flow, and it all looks so soft, and wonderful music with these peaceful sounds and everything it is just wonderful this game easily holds up to this day because you know it wasn't made with gaudy graphics or anything it was all drawn it just is a really timeless quality because of how much love was put into it uh, oh there we go this place is another kind of puzzle you just gotta rummage through all this coral and find one of these is actually a gear you'll notice because there's a seam from a part that sticks out a little further it's pretty easy to find Anyway, <laughs> I look so sad. Oh, don't worry, girls, I'll get you out. I mean, I think this is where they started to find their groove. The first two packs of the game look kind of rough, but by the time you reach this part, you just know that the guys who were working on this were having fun with it. And this, this just left such a huge impression on me when I first saw it. Uh, it's just amazing. 
Anyway, let's move on with the game. I'm done gushing over this stuff. Probably gonna gush a lot, actually. Here I come to save the day! to see a Toa in action. It's like the one from our village, but blue. Kid, this is just the coolest thing in the world. <sighs> anyway, let's go see what's in the hut that we've saved. I feel this part right here is really important. Look at this. Sometimes Rahi become infected by Makuta's darkness. Only by removing their mask can they be saved. Shh, he's resting. He's been through a great ordeal. In time he may be tamed. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. It's like, none of these creatures are actually bad. It's just that they get possessed when they wear one of those weird, rusty-looking mask things. It's even wearing a mask right now, just like all these little people are. Then just like the Toa do. But, you know. That was kind of a big feature of the whole thing back in 2001. Like, these characters always had masks right until the end of the whole story. But back in 2001, it was a huge thing. Collecting the masks was just a really huge part of getting all these toys. Everything wore a mask. The people wore masks, the animals wore masks. It was just really cool. Anyway. And here's Maku. Why does Nakama make me stay in a village at a time like this? Hookie might need me. Huh. Anyway, we'll get back to her in a moment, but let's talk to the village elder. Yay. I don't know why she has super duper long arms. She always has. Thank you for rescuing us. You are bold and true to your word. All oh, the Matoran of Gakaro owe you their gratitude. For once I am glad that Maku had snuck away from the village so that she could find you. Your eyes are filled with questions about the mysteries of Matanui, my friend. Giving you some of the answers you seek is small payment for your deeds, but I offer you what knowledge I can. Our astrologer has seen great changes in the skies, and has read the dark future of Matanui. The Toa have come and begun their mighty quest to save us from the Makuta. And yet here, in the midst of this upheaval, are you, a brave wanderer in this dangerous land. How may I help you? Who am I? I think someone has plans for you that are greater than your statue would suggest. Perhaps you are to be a hero like the Toa. I do not know. The Matoran have a- Hi, Steve! The Matoran have forgotten their civilization. Even the Turaga do not have record of all that has come before. But the ocean remembers. Like history, the water holds many secrets in its forbidden depths. It surrounds Matanui and covers it. It watches the island as it sleeps and remembers. It caught the Toa gently when they descended and delivered them to us. You are an absolute in these uncertain times. Your past is forgotten and your future is an empty book. You must find your own destiny, my brave adventurer. Well, gee, thanks for nothing. I still don't know a thing about who I am. Well, actually, I do. But you, you guys, you don't. <laughs> anyway. What of... Wait, wait, who's Gali? Gali, the Toa of Water, the great hero of Gakaro. Like the other Toa, she descended from the heavens to save us from the Makuta. She is wise and strong and quick. Gali is a protector of the sea and of the lakes and rivers that feed it. Her mask of power lets her breathe freely beneath the waves. What of Maku? Maku often sneaks out of the village to spy on Huki, the Koli champion. She tells me she is just practicing her boating, but I know the truth. It is far too dangerous for her to be outside the village now. For her own safety, I will forbid her to go, even though her wandering saved us this time. If in your travels to Pokarl you should meet Huki, tell him she is safe. He may have heard of the attack and will be worried. How may I help you? Ah, thank you. Goodbye. Good luck, brave adventurer. So, yeah. Now, here's another brilliant thing about game design. I know I've already talked about this stuff, but this is just another great thing. So, this character is going to catch your attention because you saw them in a Happy Meal. 
And you've already helped them so far. You know, they're basically your friend now. And you see that they're worried about this hooky character. And you're like, wait, that name sounds familiar. Wasn't, wasn't he in a Happy Meal too? And then you see his image right here, this this shitty pixely ass JPEG. You're like, wait a second, I recognize that. That's the poster from the Happy Meal. <gasps> Can I find him just like I met you? And then you see like, two Maku, Hookie. You're like, oh, isn't that sweet? So this, this right here is brilliant because this inspires you to want to go find this guy, you know, to go traveling around the island some more. You don't need these characters telling you that you're supposed to go to this stage or that stage next to progress through the game. It's like, hey, I like this guy. I'm worried about him. Could you go check on him for me? It's like, sure, I'll do anything for you, sure. It's a purely emotional thing, and I think that's the best way to give any gamer an incentive to do something in a game, you know? Anyway, oh, that looks familiar. I've seen that before. Maybe this person could tell me about it. Meet Nixie. I think she's pretty interesting. She's one of the most underrated characters, I think. Okay, who are you? I am the astrologer. I watch the stars and the water. Have you any other questions for me? The heavens are in turmoil and I must chart their fluctuations. What are you doing? I am charting changes in the skies. Many important things are happening around Matanui and many more will happen. I use a telescope on the cliff. It tells me what will happen and when. Ah, so that's what that is. How do I use a telescope? It's very simple. Around the base of the telescope are pictures. They are constellations, patterns of stars in the night sky, and markings that show the prophecies of legends. Each picture has a red star in it. When the red star reaches a certain place in the heavens, it means something important will happen here on Matanui, one of the prophecies. When you look through the telescope, you will see many stars, and one of them is the red star. Look at the constellations near the red star. They will look like the ones in the pictures. When the red star is exactly where it is shown in one of the pictures, that a prophecy may come true. If something changes in the sky, it is my job to change the picture so that I can better see the future. Even though we mature and remember the prophecies, nothing is certain. The future can change. If you read the numbers in the telescope, it is even easier to tell the future. So, yay. Goodbye. Now before I go to Powahi, Pokora, whatever, to see Huki. I'm going to take a trip back to Takaro, I mean Tawahi real quick. I'll explain the whole thing about Wahis and Karos in a second. Hey, where would you like to go? Tawahi. I'm going to take a look at that telescope that Nixie just told me about. So you even see it when you're driving by the boat. I'm going to show you just part of why I love this game so much. I'm going to end the episode here, uh, but I just want to share this little thing first. Man, that music is just eerie as can be. So yeah, this is what we see in the telescope. Even though it's broad daylight, we can easily see everything. Ah, uh, wow. I just love how foreboding this music is. It's just so creepy. Anyway, yeah, so here's a constellation. Just a little belt of stars and another little belt of stars. Ah, oh, wow. I wonder what, I mean, it's just something about it. Maybe there's someone up there looking down at us. Nah. <laughs> Let's look at the pictures. Uh... That might... No, that isn't it. I think this is it. But we're not very far in the game at all. So I think this might be another bug. But anyway... This seems like a good place to end the get to end the game. This right here, this just might be my favorite spot in the entire game. It is just so nondescript, but so memorable, so creepy. Just the way they built up this Makuta guy. Talk about him like he's some kind of boogeyman or a devil or something. You get the sense that he's everywhere. His evil has permeated the island, and just this music. This music is so freaking creepy. It's like in The Shining. If The Shining began with a with some happy sounding music as the helicopter pans over those mountains, it would be a completely different feeling kind of scene. But because they play creepy music, it just, it just draws you in. It's the same thing here. This creepy-ass music, I just love it. I feel like I'm being watched. 
but I have no idea who's looking at me or where they're looking at me from. They could be anywhere. It just, it, it's so, so creepy. I love this music. I love this view and everything. It's like the whole island is before you. But there's just something that makes you afraid to take those steps. That's how powerful this game is to me, guys. It just... It pulls me in, in a way that no other game has, honestly. I mean, there's a lot of games with great atmosphere, but I think that as far as kids' games go, and as Flash games go, this has the best atmosphere. This is the shit. Anyway, sail to God, Karo. I'm gonna sail to Po Wahi from there. So yeah, about the whole Karo Wahi thing. I know there's a lot of weird words you're probably not gonna understand anything about. Basically, this place we're in right now, this is Gakaro. But Gakaro is just the village. The beach and the canyons and everything beyond that, that's Gawahi. The Wahis are basically landscapes, your know, regions. And the Koros are just the villages and cities where these people live. Look, there's that same mountain, we're just seeing it from a different side. 